So, welcome to part 17 of World War II. Barbarossa has begun, okay, at 4.15am. Eastern European time operation Barbarossa invasion at Soviet Union is launched. Now, as long as go, okay, it's 21st of July, Hitler had ordered his generals, uh, 21st July 1940, Hitler had ordered his generals to prepare um, to plan an attack against the USSR. Now, a similar directive, number 21, was issued by Führer on December 18th of the same year, and the plan had been twice revised. In original form, it were based on two main offensives against Moscow and against Kiev, with a covering action in north towards Leningrad. Now, the second version still had Moscow as its main objective, but also provided for an advance into Ukraine by forces based in Romania and for a more massive thrust towards Leningrad. Now, according to the final plan, okay, the strongest thrust would be towards Leningrad with simultaneous pressure um, applied on Smolensk and then Moscow. Now, the Russians are taken completely by surprise by the assault. Uh, I've already covered some of this. You know, the Germans um, have managed to assemble their enormous army without the Russians um, realising the um, extremity of the danger they were facing. Now, success at invading forces who reckoned on completing their campaign before the winter, as I detailed on last video, they gave them to crush the Soviet Union in six months was the order Hitler gave um, and they were planning on following through that. Now, the Germans, okay, break through almost all along the front line. Now, Führer sets up his headquarters um, in the Wolfsenschasse, uh, the Wolf's Den in eastern Prussia, in a forest near Rastenburg, the Wolf's Den, the famous Wolf's Den. The German troops completely overwhelmed Russians in every sector except from the southern front, uh, where the Russians put up stiff resistance initially. Now, not only are the Russians short of motor vehicles for rapid movement, but they are positioned, okay, not along the border, which is a new border and only lightly fortified, um, but in depth okay in echelons anything from 60 to over 300 miles deep so even when the german onslaught falls on the russian front line some of the russian troops are 300 miles in the rear even in the army fronts where they are stationed they're spread out over the whole district rather than on the front line to withstand the german attack um, now as i've already detailed the german attack should not have been um, a surprise i've documented you know how um, spies already started telling russia that an attack was incoming and um, the um, defector who crossed the line shortly before June 22nd, um, you know, confirming its date and confirming that an attack would come, but the Russians did not want to believe it. Now, they didn't initially... Um take it seriously because Germany was still at war with Britain okay and they assumed that Germany would still be concentrating full forces against the UK um, and thus would not want a second front but they were mistaken now at 11.15 a.m. Molotov okay announces the German attack to the Russian people Molotov says and I quote at four o'clock this morning with no declaration of war and no demands made on the Soviet Union German troops have assailed our country attacked our front here at many points and bombed Zitomir, Kiev, Sevastopol, Kaunas and other areas. Similar attacks by bombers and artillery have also been launched from Romanian okay, and Finnish territories. Um, as I detailed, the Finns commit 18 divisions to this counter-attack. This incredible attack on our country is an act of treachery unequalled in the history of civilised nations. It's been carried out despite the existence of a non-aggression pact between the Soviet Union and Germany. And although the German government has never had the least cause for complaint about the way in which the Soviet Union has fulfilled its own obligations as part of that pact. The entire responsibility for this act of um, rapine must fall upon the Nazi rulers. The government of the Soviet Union is deeply convinced that all the population of our country will do its duty. The government appeals to you, men and women, citizens of the Soviet Union, to unite more closely than ever around the glorious Bolshevist party, the Soviet government and our great leader, Comrade Stalin. He goes on to say, Molotov, our cause is just. The enemy will be defeated. Victory will be ours. Now, Stalin himself does not speak to the people until early July, but a defence council, okay, is set up titled Stavka, okay, the defence council in light of the German attack, and 15 million Russian men um, are to be sent orders to be called up to the military. 15 million men, just like that. Italy and Romania also declare war on the USSR. Now, Churchill, okay, actually reacts to it at 9pm um, on June 22nd. Winston Churchill actually states, any state who fights Nazism will have our aid. 
So, June 23rd, the Germans made spectacular progress, okay, in Army Group North Sector, the 56th Armoured Corps um, has crossed the important Ariogala viaduct over the river um, de Pisa in Latvia, 50 miles from the starting point. So, you know, in Army Group North, German tanks already within a day have advanced 50 miles into Soviet territory. Now, in Central Sector, Guderian's tanks um, have stormed across the river Bug, um, above and below Brest, Litovsk, um, and consolidated at Kobrin and Prism. Any. Okay, 40 and 45 miles um, inside Soviet territory. While those of General Hoth um, have captured Merek and Alitus, taking the bridges on the Neiman intact after an advance of 50 five miles. Now in the southern sector, okay, where the Russians initially put up stiffer resistance, um, south of the Pripyat marshes, um, Cleese um, 1st uh, uh, Panzer Group has made more modest um, progress. There's strong Russian divisions in the area, nearly 60 divisions, including 16 armoured divisions on their front, so they are making less rapid progress. The Luftwaffe continues to inflict tremendous damage on enemy. Um, over 1,000 aircraft, uh, 1,000 Soviet aircraft are destroyed in the air or on the ground um, in raids by the Luftwaffe um, on the morning of June 22nd. And total chaos is reigning in headquarters at Russian formations, not helped, okay, by directives from general staff um, that reveal a complete ignorance at Faxit situation, such as the one sent to the headquarters of the Southwestern Front, ordering the forces there to launch a major offensive and retake Lublin, okay, which is now already 30 miles behind enemy lines. And the Soviet orders are to take Lublin within 24 hours. But the Germans have already taken Lublin and drove 30 miles past it. Now, in the northern sector, okay, Russians launch a violent counterattack. In the southern sector, the Germans occupy Dubno, an important town northeast of Lov, okay. The tanks operating on wings of Army Group Center under Guderian and Hoth um, reach Baranovichai, okay, leader and Borodichenko, more than 125 miles east east um, of Bialystok. Now, the headquarters of Pavlov, commander of Russian Western Front, the Russian 3rd, 10th and 4th Armies are immediately in danger of being encircled in a massive encirclement. So basically the German tanks, uh, the two panzer group of army group centre, um, have already driven in so far into Soviet territory, they're now um, risking completely encircling three entire Russian armies who are bewildered, communications are damaged, they don't know what's going on, they don't know where the Germans are, it's a bad situation, they've been caught completely cold. On the northern front, okay, the Russians attack Finnish defensive positions um, and counter-attack in the area of Murmansk. Now the Germans also go on to bomb Odessa, Kiev, uh, Minsk and other towns as part of the assault. Now, in the northern sector, okay, Hopner's 4th Panzer Group spreads out into Lithuania um, and takes Delgaufil uh, pills on the Davina, establishing a bridgehead across the river Davina. In the army group, Senate Sector Guderian Hoth's tanks make their first contact at Slonim, okay, um, near Bialystok. Now, Finland also on June 26 declares war um, on the Soviet Union, and Mussolini, Mussolini reviews the Torino Division, the first Italian division being sent to the Italian front. So on June 27th, five days after attack, Von Box Army Group sent a pressing on far beyond Brest-Litovsk, traps a huge amount of Russian forces in a pincer movement um, in the sector B between Bialystok um, and Novograd. Okay, Von Rundstedt's Army Group South, um, with Cleese 1st Panzer Group, breaks through between the Carpathians and the Pripyat marshes in the direction of Kiev and Vinitsa, um, southeast of Kiev. Russian resistance is dogged um, and sometimes really really tough but the Germans are making vast headway everywhere now, on July 2nd, the Antonescu Army Group, comprising the Romanian 3rd and 4th Armies and the German 11th Army, okay, waiting to join the battle till Army Group South were fully engaged, now enters the fray um, in the Moldovia sector. General Mannerheim, Finland's national hero um, from the Winter War and his prior exploits, issues a proclamation to the Finnish people calling on them to play their part in the Holy War against the Soviet Union. And also on June 27th, Hungary declares war on the Soviet Union. 
Now, by June 28th already, okay, troops of Army Group Centre, German Army Group Centre, push on and are already um, heading in the direction of and threatening the Russian city of Minsk. Soviet troops fall back to new positions um, in an attempt to consolidate a front line to resist the German onslaught. Um, Albania also declares war on the Soviet Union, although it must be said doesn't take much part. On June 29th, okay, Central Sector Armoured Corps of Hothen Guderian join up near Minsk to complete another pincer movement, cutting off the Russian forces in a huge pocket um, at Gorodice, okay, a little town in White Russia, southwest of Minsk. Now, in Finland, the Finns attacked the Russians in Karelia, um, while in the extreme north, German troops advancing from Norway and Finnish forces are both engaged in area of Murmansk uh, and Petsamo. The prize, of course, is the only port on the Barents Sea that is ice-free all year round um, and a nickel mine of great strategic importance. Final objective of the offensive in Karelia is to link up with German Army Group North. Now, June 30th, in central sector, the German state Bob Ruiz, okay, and establish a bridgehead um, across the Beresina. Meanwhile, the mop up the big pocket at Bialystok, um, destroying the remaining Russian 10th Army. Army Group South takes Lov and attacks the Stalin line. Okay, the fortifications um, built by the Russians, um, but entirely neglected by them um, when they advanced at borders of Poland, and the threat to Kiev becomes increasingly um, imminent. So basically, on the 1st of July, Riga, okay, falls to the Germans. Now, on 1st of July, Ribbentrop urges Japan's foreign minister, uh, Matsuoka, to press his government to declare war on the USSR. The Russians are withdrawing a large proportion of their forces from Far East in order to dispatch all possible reinforcements to West. Um, they've never left themselves so weak, but the Japanese refuse categorically, um, and the spy Sarge tells Moscow the whole story. They've already chosen the line of that expansion towards the Southeast Asia region and the oil fields in the Dutch East Indies. Now, July 2nd, okay, um, in Army Group Centre, um, 4th Panzer Group under Hopner concentrates on the right bank of the Davina and attacks the Russian fortifications on the border with Latvia, successfully breaking through at Ostrov. And in Army Group South Sector, the German 11th Army and the two Romanian armies, the 3rd and 4th, come into action, considerably increasing the pressure on the Russians in Moldavia and the direction of Vinitsa. Now, Army Group South initially entered the fray um, and pushed through, heading towards Minsk, but then this secondary front on the south from the German 11th Army and the Romanian armies has put a lot of pressure um, on Soviet forces in the Ukraine. So on 3rd of July, okay, Stalin finally speaks to the Soviet people via radio. He already admits the loss of Lithuania, um, parts of Belarusia and the western Ukraine. Stalin closes out with saying a grave threat hangs over our country. But the Germans, he says, are not invincible and he reminds his listeners of Napoleon. Then he defends a non-aggression pact to 1939 with Germany, for which the purists in the party had always, had always reproached him on, saying it was a mistake. Um, but now he urges the Russians to resist invasion to a better end, leaving nothing behind them but scorched earth. Every act of cowardice will be punished. Military tribunals will pass summary judgment on any who fail in our defence. He's talking about drumhead trials. Uh, whether through panic or treachery, regardless of their position or rank, he announces, OK, Stalin, the setting up of a national committee of defence, presided over by Stalin himself, with Molotov, um, Voroshilov, Milenkov um, and Beria, and calls for partisan activities to be formed behind German lines and orders the mobilization of all the USSR's resources to contribute to the war effort. Uh, Stalin go goes on to say, all the efforts of the people must be exerted to beat the enemy on to victory. Now, in substance, OK, and with psychological acumen, Stalin appeals not so much to German ideals as to Russian patriotism. Now, the front gets reorganised, OK, into three sectors. Northwest, with the Baltic and Northern fleets entrusted um, to Voroshilov. The Western front, OK, is placed under command of Timoshenko. Southwestern, with the Black Sea fleet entrusted to Budny. Now, each of these commanders is given a political and military advisor, um, you know, to help run the areas. And battalions are also raised 
for service in all big cities. All men between age 16 and 60 and women between 18 and 50 are called up to take part in what Stalin terms the civil defence movement positions are not to be def- uh, to be defended till last man the line is to be held at all costs according to soviet leaders um you know in between smolensk and moscow so general franz halder chief of the german general staff notes in his diary that the task given to the german armed forces uh, may be considered fulfilled um, if the bulk of the enemy are driven back beyond the divina and the Dieppe uh, rivers so, in the southern sector, the German 6th Army opens a breach in the Stalin line near the old Polish border east of Lov, in sector defended by Russian 6th and 26th Armies. Von Cleese, Panzer Group 1, floods through the gap, um, making for Beridechev and Zitomir southeast and east of Kiev, but Hitler tells them to slow down. On 6th of July, in southern sector, Romanian troops occupy, occupy some towns just over the Carpathians and are given a very enthusiastic welcome um, by much of the population which actually is Romanian in outskirts of Vitbisk not far from Smolensk the 16th Army of Army Group North makes contact with the 9th Army of Army Group Centre the northernmost German Army the 18th continues its advance line establishing a line from Lake Pipus um, through Tartu to Panu north of the Gulf of Riga Germans are already north of the Gulf of Riga their attack has been savage and and fast. On 7th of July German pressure continues for Baltic to Black Sea while mopping up operations um, continue to try and liquidate the Russian forces trapped in the huge pockets um, created by the German encirclements. So on July 8th, okay, in northern sector, the 4th Panzer Group under Hopner captures Piskov, okay, near the southern tip of lake um, and of the same name and advances northeast towards Novograd and Leningrad. Now, Germany and Italy on July 8th announced the end of the Yugoslav nation. The map at country is redrawn as follows. Croatia is constituted as an independent nation under Tomislav, um, you know, the Duke of Spoleto. The autonomous province um, of Ljubljana, newly created, is annexed to the Kingdom of Italy, and the greater part of Dalmatia and the Adriatic Islands are also assigned to Italy, together with Kataro. A large part of Bosnia is put under Italian protection and administration, and Montenegro becomes an Italian protectorate, and it is decided to restore its monarchy, though the decision is never implemented. Croatia duly, duly adheres to the Tripartite Pact um, of 12th July and the anti Comintern Pact on November 25th. Lower, Cap, uh, Lower Carinthia and part of Cariola are incorporated into Germany. Hungary receives the territory that basically carved Yugoslavia up like a roast. Now, on the 9th of July, Russian resistance in all the pockets not already liquidated comes to an end. Now, up to this time already, okay, the Soviet Union from June 22nd to July 9th has already lost over 2,500 tanks. Uh, They've already had over 300,000 prisoners taken by the Germans. Um, And in the Bialystok sector, 40 entire Russian divisions have been wiped out by the mass encirclements and the following um, cleanup operations. 40 divisions wiped out um, you know that's not much short a division number than Germany invaded Poland with uh, wiped out in a set of um, brutal encirclements now the second and third panzer group of Hoth and Guderian um, combined to form the 4th armoured army they adv- advanced towards the rivers um, Dnieper and the Divina towards Smolensk on the way to Moscow on 10th of July in southern sector Russian um, forces launched an unexpected and violent counter attack um, in area of Korea and west of Kiev, um, but it is met and checked um, by 1st Panzer Group under von Kleist, but with heavy losses. Now, following Torino Division, the rest of the Italian Expeditionary Force um, in Russia, um, a whole number of divisions leaves for the Eastern Front. Now, having driven off the Soviet counter-attack at Koretsen, the German armour advances to within 10 miles of Kiev already. Okay, within a matter of weeks, the German attack has been frightening, but then dogged Soviet resistance forces them um, to hold their positions um, and advance no further. Now, Moscow's raided by the Luftwaffe for the first time um, on July 12th. Germans claim to be before Kiev and state that the fall of Kiev and also of Leningrad um, may be imminent. So, following a proposal, okay, sent to Stalin by Churchill two days before, a pact of mutual assistance is signed between Great Britain and the USSR, and both sides undertake not to sign a separate peace. So, they both state pretty much that 
peace with Germany or Italy must be agreed by both members. Now, July 14th in the north, okay, Germans reached Luga River and now directly threaten Leningrad already within weeks. The Germans are approaching Leningrad hundreds of miles into Soviet territory. Uh, Soviet resistance here is rather disorganized, um, but it's by no means as brilliant as it is in other sectors up front. You know, the Russian leaders are now critically aware um, of the situation um, over much of the front. Um, and actually, Voroshilov, um, chief party organization for Leningrad, issues a general order to all units on northwestern front leningrad cradle of the proletarian revolution is directly threatened with invasion by enemy um, while the troops in line from the Berent Sea to Tallinn and Hanko are fighting back bravely against the hordes of the Nazi and Finnish aggressors. Defending every inch of our beloved Soviet ground, the troops on the central west front, those in Leningrad sector, um, are failing to stand up to enemy attacks um, and showing proper resistance. You know, the Germans basically are ransacking Soviet territory. Now, he gave an order, okay, that warns that anyone who leaves the front line, anyone who gives up resistance against the Germans without orders will be court-martialed and maybe shot on site regardless of rank you know this shows the kind of desperation of russian commanders they are being overrun um, by a german wave now it's clear russians admit situation is critical um, but that they are determined to hold firm at any cost now on july 15th the counter-attack is launched by russians before leningrad um, in the southern part of the luga line between lake ilman and Solsey. now the russians keep their efforts up for three days but the most they can do is slow down the german advance they cannot actually force the germans to withdraw draw in any way now their divisions and civilian uh, civilian militia recruited in leningrad are eager but inexperienced and they are routed and massacred by the german panzer formations meanwhile hundreds of thousands of men and women are mobilized to start building fortifications new defense lines are constructed um, one front mouth of the luga to the chadova um, ganicha urik and pulkova and then along the neva another the external line from peterhof to gatchina to pulkova so basically they want 400 uh, miles of barbed wire erected 16,000 miles of open trenches dug, 5,000 wood and concrete emplacements for guns and machine guns, as well as a total of 185 miles of barriers made from felled trees. They're now literally throwing the terrain in front of the Germans to try and stop them. So July 16th, Finnish troops break through the Soviet positions north of Lake Ladoga and occupy uh, Sorta Vala in the extreme north of the lake. In central sector of the Eastern Front, uh, troops of German Army Group Center continuing their advance begin the destruction of the enormous Soviet forces trapped in a pocket in the Uman area as well as undertaking mopping up operations in the Dieppe Basin. So basically, okay, Hitler sends for Goring, Ketel, Lares, Bormann and the Nazi theorist Rosenberg um, at, to his headquarters um, to discuss the Reich, Reich's objectives in the East. Incredible. Now, coming in, um, coming into four Reich Commission territories and direct annexation to Greater Reich of the richest provinces, including the Crimea, Rosenberg is appointed head of a new minister um, for Eastern Occupied Territories. Now, his task will be not the exploitation of those territories um, for the German of the benefit uh, for benefit of German people only, but also their political uh, reclamation, elimination of communists, and deportation of the Jews. On July seventeenth. Okay, the invading German forces continue their pressure all along um, the front line in the USSR. In central sector, the Germans establish a bridgehead across the Dniepne near Mogilev, east of Minsk. The Romanians in the southern sector take Kishinev, the capital of Bessabaria, near Vitbisk. Now, Stalin's eldest son okay, is also taken prisoner by the Germans in the south. Uh, General Giovanni Messi takes over command of the east. Italian expeditionary force um, in Russia, but Italy will play only a minor part. And the Italian expeditionary force in Russia by the time of Battle of Stalingrad and following that is decimated. So July 19th, okay, OKW, okay, 
uh, German High Command of Military Forces gives orders that after defeating the Soviet forces in the Smolensk sector, the second panzer group under Guderian and the second army are to abandon their offensive against Moscow and turn south to wipe out the Soviet fifth army, surround Kiev and join up with von Kleist first panzer group in a pincer movement now Guderian furiously protests um, at giving up his advance towards Moscow um, but he's overruled and the orders stand so on July 20th Stalin is named the People's Commissar for Defence not surprising really um, and you know Russian withdrawal um, beyond the D uh, Dniester announced the following day and the Germans launched their first night air raid on Moscow um, and on following day July 22nd Moscow has further um, heavy night attacks so Hitler's already um, you know starting the terror campaign against the Russians so on July 23rd the heroic garrison of Brest Litovsk Okay, besieged and surrounded um, on the first day of the invasion, June twenty second, and ceaselessly hammered by bombers and artillery. Um, you know, including the massive mortar Cal, which says six hundred and fifteen millimeter caliber uh, firing projectiles weighing over two tons, um, is finally forced to surrender. Incredible. June to July 20, incredible. They held out for so long, you know, holding out for a whole month, surrounded and bombarded and attacked. July 27th, okay, the Germans take Tallinn, capital of Estonia, on the Gulf of Finland. They've now reached the Gulf of Finland itself, uh, looking out at the sea uh, with Finland over the way. In central sector, the encirclement of Soviet forces at Smolensk is completed incredible maneuver it is completed however the russians managed to organize a new defensive line 25 miles east of the city and that artillery reveals a certain superiority now in the smolensk cauldron okay there are multiple rocket uh, multiple rocket uh, launchers firing 320 uh, rockets in 25 seconds called the katyusha by the russians and stalin's tools by germans made their first appearance and strike mortal terror into the germans and if you've ever seen a that Yusha um, battery fire, or you've seen 20 of them lined up firing, it may scare some German soldiers. Now, obviously, uh, Russian infantry had not heard a new weapon, and thus many at Kat Katyusha rockets actually bombard some Russian infantry positions as well. Now, July 28th, okay, in Central Sector, Germans begin the liquidation um, of the Russian forces trapped in the Smolensk region. Now, but end of July, okay, already in Northern Sector, German 16th Army takes Lake Ilmen. Uh, when they breach the Russian positions, okay, on Lake Ilmen and Pipus, the road to Leningrad is now open and the city is also attacked from the south. So the German advance has been one of frightening speed. They are already, um, they've already encircled Smolensk, okay, um, trapping a huge army there. They're already advancing to Kiev, and the German armies are already now advancing directly on Leningrad. You know, 1st of August, uh, German Army Group Center continues to attack the troops trapped in the Smolensk pocket. The Russians fight back with absolute tenacity um, in sectors of Osha and Vitbisk, west of Smolensk, and in this same se uh, sector, Soviet forces under Timoshenko uh, suddenly launch a powerful counter-offensive at Gomel, south of Mogilev, against a bridgehead established by right um, wing of Army Group Centre on the left bank of the Dnieper. So on August 2nd, okay, the advance guards of Army Group North reach Lake Starea, um, near Lake Ilman, south of Leningrad. In southern sector, the Italian um, Pesubio and Torino divisions are sent into the front line for the first time. In southern sector, 1st Panzer Group under von Kleist joins up with the 17th Army after destroying um, big Russian formations um, west of Pervo Maisik, um, about 100 miles north of Odessa. Um, Germans also continue night raids um, on Moscow so by early August okay the Smolensk pocket is finally finished off the Germans encircled them with a classic Wehrmacht encirclement and they have been working days to mop up operations now okay according um, to Russian sources there were over 700,000 Russian soldiers in the pocket um, half of those have been taken prisoner the Russians don't admit such a heavy loss but they do admit the loss of 10 divisions 3,000 tanks and armored cars and 1,000 aircraft 
regardless of whether it is 700,000 troops in there or not, there was a huge amount of divisions. Um, Russian armies trapped there, they have been wiped out with thousands of planes, tanks, hundreds of thousands of prisoners. It is a brutal loss um, to Stalin's forces in that area. Now, Having mopped up a few areas in Estonia where the Russians were still offering resistance, the Germans are solidly established um, on the coast of the Gulf of Finland. Now on August 7th, okay, Stalin takes directly over as commander-in-chief of Soviet armed forces. Now, okay, in southern sector, the Battle of the River Bug begins and the Soviet defence line is quickly broken. But although they are everywhere in retreat, the Russians are by no means finished. Um, they have shown they have some excellent tanks in their field. Um, the German general Generals ask Hitler in vain for bigger tanks and anti-tank guns, more powerful than 37mm and 50mm guns they now have available. Uh, there's still very few 75mm guns. So already against, um, you know, the heavy Russian tanks um, and the T-34s, the Germans are already starting to realise that their current equipment is not strong enough to fight these huge Russian tank formations. Now, August 12th, OK, Hitler issues Directive Number 34 on conduct of operations. So now they've achieved some massive encirclements create huge holes in Russian armies what the Russians are trying to bottleneck as quickly as they can. Hitler now issues new orders to his armies. Army Group South is to prevent the enemy from reoccupying the eastern bank of the Dnieper um, and to occupy the Crimea the industrial districts of Kharkov and the coal fields of the Donitz Basin. Now Army Group North is to follow up its offensive with the aim of cutting off Leningrad and joining up with the Finnish armies entering the war and Army Group Centre, okay, contrary um, to the the precise intentions of von Brauschwitz is to suspend the offensive against Moscow. Something that may have cost the Germans in the long run, as we will see. But they've just recently cleared up the um, Smolensk garrison. Um, they have wiped out huge swathes of Russian armies and divisions in that sector. And it was the perfect time to head for Moscow. Um, but Hitler has now directed Army Group Center to halt and to divert whatever forces are needed to help Army Group North or South. Now, the Russian government does admit on August 13th um, the evacuation of Smolensk. Now, Stalin receives a message from Churchill and Roosevelt, um, the American president, proposing joint meeting in Moscow, um, and Stalin broadcasts his acceptance of such a meeting. Stalin's already now desperate. The German armies have run over the Russian armies smashed through them, encircled them, mopped up huge pockets. The Russians have already lost hundreds of thousands of prisoners, thousands of tanks, thousands of planes. They're now uh, recalling forces from Far Eastern Russia, but it will take time for them to reach the front line. So... In the northern sector, okay, the Germans captured the ancient city of Novgorod, north of Lake Ilmen, southeast of Leningrad. In the southern sector, okay, they take towns on the lower Dieppe, and they are already threatening Kharkov and the Donitz Basin and the Crimea. Odessa, meanwhile, is surrounded by German forces. So the US President and Secretary of State tell the Japanese ambassador that the conditions that the United States consider indispensable um, if talks are uh, to be resumed leading to a possible Pacific conference. So America's already, I think, sensing there's going to be trouble in Pacific. They have been warned that Japan aims, as I've detailed, to attack Pearl Harbor American bases and launch attacks against British colonies in the area. Um, and I think America's just trying to um, preempt any possible attack. Now, on August 18th, okay, the Russians evacuate Nikolaev. Now, Hitler, re uh, Hitler revises instructions given in Directive Number 34 on August 12th and August 21st. Now, besides occupying the Donitz Basin, the German armies must also cut off the Russians from their petrol supplies from the Caucasus. Okay, in Central Sector, the 6th Army um, and the 1st Panzer Group begin the battle for Kiev. On Leningrad Front, okay, Okay, in the northern sector, the defenders occupy a salient some 12 miles wide and 120 miles deep, while the German advance towards Gulf of Finland, southwest at city and towards Lake Ladoga to the southeast. The Soviet commander orders his troops to withdraw from the salient to avoid being encircled. 
So already the learning of massive encirclements elsewhere and don't wish to suffer the same fate. The Wehrmacht really through the wars and another thing that people don't consider, you know, the Russian armies, although that some uh, their troops had fought in Finland, were relatively unbattle tested. You know, many of them were not veterans of World War One. You know, the German armies have fought many successful lightning campaigns, uh, you know, from Poland to Norway to France and the Low Countries to Yugoslavia and Greece. So the Germans are now battle hardened veterans. Uh, many of them except the new divisions um, that I went through the creation of in preparation for attack basically Marshal Voroshilov calls on all people of Leningrad to defend the city at all costs you know the same day the Germans capture Chedovo cutting the main railway line between Leningrad and Moscow and that railway line is the main source of supplies because Moscow is a major hub Rail lines come from the east into Moscow and then rail lines then go south, west and north to Leningrad. Moscow is one of the main um, supply centres which Hitler's stopping army group centres advance on them which were met by Guderian's furious protests. Guderian had a point. If they could take Moscow before the winter they would effectively cut off one of the main Soviet supply lines for their entire fronts which would be a huge loss to the Russians. So on August 22nd, okay, the Germans um, give estimates of losses, okay, in the first two months of the attack. Now, the Germans already state they have taken over 1.3 million prisoners, okay, have destroyed 14,000 tanks, 15,000 artillery pieces, and over 11,000 um, aircraft. The dead, according to Germans, number over 3 million. Now, Soviet forces give lower figures, and the Germans no doubt inflated their figures a bit. But either way, the Russian forces have suffered staggering losses. In fact, the Russian armies have already suffered losses that would have wiped out any other nation. But like I said, like I spoke on in the Build Up to Barbarossa video, part 16, Russia has three things. Vast numbers, vast size of territory and terrain to help them as well. So on August 23rd, okay, 2nd Panzer Group and 2nd Army uh, move south towards Gomel, okay, thus complying with Führer's directive that Army Group Centre should reinforce Army Group South offensive. Now on August 24th, the Russians launch a counterattack um, in the Gomel sector, but what you find is in this time, many Russian counterattacks fitted out very quickly. They just cannot handle the German attack and mobility. Um, like I said, many Russian units were not fully mobilised, where the Germans did put a huge amount of time um, in the in the build-up to World War II and then during the war, especially with new divisions to make them more motorised. So Mussolini visits the German headquarters on Eastern Front and spends two days in talks with Hitler and other German political and military leaders. Then accompanied by Führer, he inspects the Southern Front and together with Marshal von Rundstedt and General Messi reviews the Italian troops engaged in recent operations. Now in the central sector in area um, of Veliki Luki, north of Vitbesk, the Russians launch a counterattack, but the Germans halt it within 24 hours and it achieves nothing. In the northern sector, the Germans complete their mopping up operations in Estonia and continue their forward advance to apply pressure on Leningrad. Russians destroy okay, the great Zaraposi Dam on the Dieppe to prevent the Germans benefiting from it. Now on August 29th, okay, the Finns capture Vipuri, which they had to see to the Soviet Union after their earlier fighting in the Winter War. Now this brings them very close to Leningrad, but despite German insistence, they halt on their pre war frontier a decision taken on political grounds only a few at finnish units enter russian territory pressing on as far as the river sphere um, and lake oneg thus cutting russian communications between the white sea and the baltic so the Finns pretty much are reclaiming the territory lost at Russians in winter war, but do not have had to go any further. Um, and, you know, they could have attacked Leningrad in the rear as well, uh, which would have benefited the German um, assault going on at the time. Now, in northern sector, the Germans capture Miga, OK, cutting the last railway line connection between Leningrad and the rest of Russia. In central sector, the Russians launch another ineffective counterattack north of Gomel. The armoured corps of Kleist and Guderian throw all their forces into battle for Kiev, which is strenuously defended uh, by Marshal Budini's troops. 
So, okay, in the northern sector, the German attacking force reaches the south shore of Lake Ladoga and takes a great part of the left bank of the Neva. Um, though, without succeeding in crossing the river, they also take, um, you know, Schusselberg, um, called Petra Krepost, and Leningrad is cut off from the rest of the country. Leningrad is now officially um, cut off from the rest of the Soviet Union. You know, the Russian position southwest at sea is equally desperate. The Germans have established bridgeheads on the Gulf of Finland, um, only a few miles from Leningrad. They can virtually see Leningrad in the distance. To the south, okay, um, of Leningrad, Army Group North attacks, okay, vigorously um, in the Kolpino um, and Pilkova sectors, 15 miles from Leningrad. So the trap is closing on Leningrad. The Russians still have a major bridgehead uh, um, opposite um, Kronstadt and west of the point at which the Germans have established themselves on the Gulf of Finland. Now, the German government also announced on September 1st that all Jews over six years old must wear a badge with the star of David um, soon on their chest as a mark of shame in a spotlight on the horrors to come. Horrors I will not really cover um, properly in this video series. If any Jewish people listen to my videos, I do not want to bring back any terrible memories from that evil time. Um, we kind of know what went on. But that is a very bad sign of things to come. So there's the end of part 17. We continue in part 18.